Hi, I'm Phil Webb, Principal Consultant with Select Business Solutions. In this module, Fundamentals of Objects to Users, we consider the relationship of users to the subject domain in which they are operating. An understanding of this relationship is the basis for conceiving, scoping and specifying systems which are likely to provide value to those users. The relationship can be described in terms of the approach that users take to the domain, the behaviour that they and the elements of the subject domain exhibit, the communication that occurs between users and the domain, and the models that users develop of the domain and of the objects within it. When we refer to users, we're referring to people who operate within a subject domain and may interact with systems for that purpose. Users have an understanding of the subject domain based on concepts in the subject area and objects in the environment which they are observing and with which they are interacting. When we refer to objects, we are referring to any item which is identifiable in the environment in which users operate. These objects are distinct from one another and typically respond in ways that are appropriate to their purpose and may exist in various states at different times. Systems are, are of interest to us because, in the end, the purpose of discussing this topic is to form the basis for developing object-oriented systems. In many cases, users interact directly with systems to achieve their purposes within the subject domain. In other cases, users benefit from the existence of other systems by interacting indirectly with them via other systems. The user is nevertheless presented with some behaviour about which they generate a model. That model might or might not include the concept that there are layers with some of the behaviour is being provided by a lower layer provided indirectly by other systems. Those other systems might also possibly be accessible directly or by a variety of other routes. We take a non-technical perspective in this module, as we're not guided in our thinking by any technical approaches or constrained by any technical limitations. If and when the information, understanding and knowledge that users acquire in a subject domain is utilised as the basis for the development of one or more systems to support or replace the user, then it will be for the specifiers of the requirements and the design of those systems to interpret the user's understanding. When learning about this area, you'll find it useful to draw on your own experience of subject domains with which you are familiar, and in particular ones that you've learnt about recently. The experience of learning about a new subject domain is invaluable in gaining an understanding of the processes by which people develop new knowledge. However, sometime after you've experienced the learning process, it's easy to forget what it felt like not to know some of the things that you now know. In particular, it's difficult to remember the wrong turns and corrections that you made in the process of acquiring the knowledge that you now take for granted. Whatever new skill or knowledge you've developed, whether it's the ability to ride a bicycle, to juggle or to play poker, we will attempt to cover here some aspects of the relationship that you will have developed with the subject domain. When this is applied to more substantial domains such as flying an aircraft, managing a project or designing a building, it's likely that these domains will be involving larger numbers of people, some management of resources and probably some laws. In these cases, the development of the relationships between the users and the domain may occur over longer timescales and be more complex. The application of an understanding of the topics in this module may assist you in that process. This module begins with a session on the rationale for this subject area. This session takes a broad view of the relationships that users have with subject domains and of the issues that are relevant to understanding those relationships. It also discusses the application of that understanding in the context of object-oriented software engineering, which, despite the external and non-technical perspective of this module, is nevertheless the subject of most of this course. 
The rest of this module covers two main parts, broadly named concepts and applicability. The concepts part is the longer of the two and covers the various ways in which users relate to the domains in which they operate. It takes a fairly fundamental approach to the ways in which users acquire information, develop understanding and gain knowledge of those domains, and to the main aspects of those processes that are relevant to users' approach, operation and involvement in those domains. The concepts part consists of an overview session early in the module and later in the module a series of sessions on observation, interaction, correlation, classification, expectation, intent, analysis and synthesis. The smaller applicability part covers some ways in the user's relationship with the subject domain is applied to the realm of systems which are intended to provide value to users operating in the domain. It provides, if you like, one end of each of the bridges from this module to some of the other modules on object-oriented analysis and object-oriented design and human-computer inter interface design. The applicability part consists of an overview session early in the module and later in the module a series of sessions on requirements, design and user interfaces. This module relates in a variety of ways to other modules of the course. From the point of view of users, this module acts as a starting point for learning about the purpose and motivation for the entire field of object-oriented software engineering, as covered in more detail in other modules. The module on object-oriented software engineering, shortened to OOS, is in one sense completely independent of this module, but in another sense is taking the same approach to mapping from a general view of the world into a specific area. In the case of this module, that area is the behaviour of users. In the case of the OOS module, that area is the behaviour of software systems. You're more likely to find it easier to understand the modules on object-oriented analysis and object-oriented design and human-computer interface design from the understanding that you'll gain from this module and from the OOS module.